Hi everybody, Kenny B here once again on Zombie Movies and TV. I'm going to cover today episode 11 of season 2, Walking Dead. Or as I like to call it, Carl Grimes, That Little Bastard. I mean, there's a lot to cover on this episode. But first and foremost, congratulations Carl Grimes. You're now the Wesley Crusher of the Walking Dead TV series. In one episode, you've gathered as much hate as Will Wheaton's character had on Star Trek Next Generation. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. We're going to cover them one by one. First off, let's make another point here. This episode not only should be called Call Grimes, You Little Bastard, it's also What Not to Do as a Parent During a Zombie Apocalypse. You have all kinds of threats out there. You know, walkers, potential raiders. So what do Lori and Rick do? Well, whatever, Carl. Run along, do something. To get out of my fucking hair. So, that leads the little bastard to do all kinds of fucked up shit. First off, he wants to go see the prisoner. Shane tells him, now, go away, you can't see the prisoner. Instead, what's Carl do? Absolutely the total opposite. He breaks into the location where the prisoner is held and starts talking to him. And instead of even saying, I'm sorry, his thing was, don't tell my parents. It's not like your parents really gave a shit, Carl. They let you just run around and do whatever you wanted. So what's he do next? After that little episode, he goes wandering off, goes to Daryl's old camp, steals Daryl's gun! Okay, that's pretty bad. Not only does he steal Daryl's gun, but he wanders around with it, just aimlessly, and goes up to that creek where Herschel and Otis and them were pulling zombies out of. Now, Kids being kids, what's he do? He throws rocks at a zombie. But evidently, Carl is a waterhead. Because not only does he throw rocks at a zombie like a girl, he limp wristed those rocks. On top of that, he wanders around, gets closer to it, aims his pistol, <laughs> like an idiot. Drops the pistol when a zombie frees itself from the muck, then runs away. Doesn't tell anybody. Shows up at sundown, when everybody else is there for that meeting about what to do with this Randall asshole. And then, doesn't say anything like, yeah, I'm, I saw a zombie in the woods and I kind of helped it get free inadvertently. No, 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 it doesn't say jack shit. The next thing he does... When Dale screams and everybody's rushing to go there, he's told by Lori, go to the house, lock the door. Instead, the little shit shows up where Dale, his guts all open, which he deserved, but I'll get to that in a minute, just totally ignores his parents. Which, once again, like I said, Rick and Lori need to abort the kid they're having because obviously they can't take care of the one they got. Perhaps they need to go and rethink this whole child rearing thing because they're failing horribly at it. Now for the next big issue. Dale dying. Everybody's all butt hurt and upset about it. But Dale, while I did agree with him sometimes, he was a voice of reason, was an idealist, and unfortunately an idiot when it comes to survival in this kind of environment. Randall is obviously not to be trusted. Rick should have never saved him in the first place, but I've said that many a time already. But now Dale wants to try to recruit him into the fold. Now I kind of blame Daryl for this in a way. Because what Daryl should have said was, uh, yeah, the whole rape thing. If he would have said that, Everybody there would have probably been like, hang the fucker, because we can't trust him. 
which is true. You can't trust a guy like that, because more than likely he took part in a rape. He already knows where your camp's at, so when he goes back to his friends, first thing he's going to do is tell everybody, hey guys, I know where we can get food, there's women for you, have fun. Because if he was really so uh, afraid of being with these people, he would have left a long time ago. Instead, he chose to stay with them. Which, once again, proves what kind of person he is. But Dale has to argue and cry and wring his hands about, Oh, well, you know, we can't be judge, jury, and executioner. Let's give him a chance. Well, you already seen what happens in the next episode. That chance ain't gonna fucking do jack and shit. Because now, you're gonna have a whole fucking army of guys coming, trying to take the farm. Because they didn't do the right thing in the first place. Once again, that's more Rick's fault than Dale's, but... Like I said, I've already said that. Now, Laura, uh, not Laura, uh, the Andrea chick, she was suck up the chain all this time, all of a sudden decides, hmm, maybe Dale's right. Well, you know, okay, bitch, you gotta make up your fucking mind. You know, you can't sit there and be like, oh, well, Dale's right. When you know in your heart, he's not. People like Randall can't be trusted. She knows this, but she's more afraid of Shane's bullying than, than Dale's bullying. Which, once again, Dale gets all butt hurt because he's wet. Now the execution goes wandering off, gets himself killed because he's not paying attention because he's so pissed off about, oh, they're going to kill poor Randall. That's why he deserved what he got. He was so mentally fucked up in the head because they're going to execute somebody that's a threat to the group that he didn't hear that zombie coming up on him and got what he deserved. And now we got a, the farm compromised. Well, going to be compromised. My apologies. Once again, like I said, if you've seen the previews, you know what's going to happen. All because Rick should never take the guy home back into the, the farm in the first place. For once, Shane was actually right about killing the guy. Oh, and another thing about the little bastard. I forgot. Him showing up for the execution. Once again, where the fuck are the parents? The parents are just letting this fucking kid run all over the damn place. And now you see what happens. They, you know, Richard just took, took him outside, hand a pistol to Daryl, because Daryl's the only one that's really sensible out of all these people. Kill this little fuck, uh, kill that fucker Randall. Because now, like I said, everything is going to go to shit. Because Rick fucked up. It's just a shame. And another thing I want to ask. Those of you who read the comics know that Terrell, who I'm assuming T-Dog's modeled after, actually had a lot to say throughout the comics. Why the fuck isn't T-Dog actually saying anything other than token lines? Even in the previews for next week, they had him doing a stereotypical line of, oh, hell no. Come on, people. Get some better writers, because I know you got rid of the director. He got rid of the original writers. But now it's like everything is starting to turn to shit. Because like I said, this episode really didn't make sense. It's about the little bastard running around like, an, like a fucking lunatic, doing whatever the hell he feels like, with no supervision whatsoever from parents. Dale doing his little liberal mindset bullying, you know, trying to get everybody to see his way. And the group starting to splinter over somebody that's not even one of them. Now, Daryl's right, the group is broken. Hopefully Daryl can fix it. I don't rely on Shane to do it because Shane's out for Shane only. And one other thing before I go. I still haven't heard back from the Talking Dead folks yet. I've been trying to talk to these people. Sent them multiple emails. Some of my friends from the game shop sent them emails. Uh, they haven't responded yet. Still trying to get on there. And with two episodes left of Walking Dead, might not be on there until next season. But I'm going to keep trying. 
And right now, I am compiling a list of future films I'm going to be doing. Editing. Well, not editing, but uh, critiquing. Starting with one of the worst zombie movies of all time. I mean, this one makes Day of the Dead 2 Contagion look like an Academy Award winner. The first Zombie Diaries. I'm going to be hitting that in a few weeks. Until then, take care. Remember, keep your weapons handy, trust no one outside your group, and you will survive. This is Kenny B. signing off.